Hello everybody, in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the basics of using RStudio and R. Now, right down here in the last lesson, I showed you how to access uh, kind of a file path here, and you can see what files are in here, and all you have to do is click on this, and then your file folder comes up, and then you can click into wherever you want, you're going to open it up, and these are some of the files that we're going to be using later on in this series. Over here on this left-hand side, we have our console opened, but we can't interact with this data or write code yet because we don't have an R file open. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come right here. We're gonna open up an R script. We can also open up a ton of different files. In fact, at the very end, we'll be opening up an R markdown file to create a dashboard for some data visualization. But you can open up lots of different files here if you want to do that. We can also open up these files over here. So if we want to, we can do that. But if we open it up right here, then we can name it and then it gets saved into that file path. So we're gonna call this one the basics of R. And we're gonna save that. So now we get this open right up here where we can actually write our code. Now I say write our code, we can actually write code down here in our console. And I'll show you that in a little bit when we start creating some variables and expressions and different things like that. But for me personally, most of my workflow is gonna be up here. So I'm gonna add some uh, lines here so we have some room to work with. The other thing that I typically do or have set is a soft wrap long lines. Now, if we don't have this, if I say I uh, am writing something, this is gonna be our code. Let me spell this right. And I add a bunch of dashes. You're gonna note it just keeps going and it keeps going. Um, especially as we start bringing in code or we start bringing in files, um, we're going to want something like this, which is a soft wrap, which will wrap it to the next line. And so we still are on line two, but it is kind of all in our viewing area instead of being way over to the right, which I personally don't like. So I'm going to get rid of this. Now, we've opened up a file. We now have access to write code in R. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the very basics. And I'll kind of show you how you can write it up here and you can write it down here. Now, one thing to note is we have this little sweep button right here. This is our clear console. We can click this button. And it's gonna reset everything over here. And we also have a sweep button over here. We can clear out our environment. We'll be using both of those. But let's get started with the basics. So we're gonna take a look at variables. Now variables are where you're gonna assign a value, whether it is a string or it is a number, to a variable which is then stored in R's memory. So let's call this one the num variable. We have to use an assignment operator. Now this assignment operator right here essentially says, take this number, we'll do 42, take this number, and put it within this num variable. Now, we want to run this code, and we can do that by highlighting our code like this and doing control enter. Now that we've ran it, you can see over here, it is stored that as a value. We have our num var, and then we have 42. Now that we have this, what we can do is we can say print, and we'll do num underscore var. If we print out, you're gonna notice down here in the console, 42 is printed out. So we printed it out up here where we're actually writing our code into our console, but we can interact with our code as well down here. So we can do num underscore var, and then we can do times two. And if we run this, we get 84, it just doubles it. So we're able to write this, but notice if we come up here, let's do control S, I just saved this file. If we get rid of this, so let's get rid of our basics of R, and we're gonna clean this out. If I pull back up our basics of R, that multiplication times two is not there. So we don't have access to the code that's written down here in our console. So that is okay if you're just messing around and kind of looking at your code. Maybe we pulled in a data set and we're looking at data. We don't really wanna save it in our code. That's okay to write it down here. But anything you want to save, it is best to write it up here. Otherwise, when you save it and you exit out and you come back later, you won't have it. Now, I told you that this was numeric and we can actually check that by using this class right here. So we're gonna say, we're gonna pass through our variable. So we have our numvar, we're passing through this variable into this class function. And what it's gonna do, it is gonna output the data type of this right here. Now, of course, we're passing through our variable but in the memory, it has this stored right here as the value in memory. 
So we are looking at this right here. We're not actually looking at the text. So just something to note. And we don't have to just store numbers like this. We can store a lot of other things, including string. So if we want to say, oh, we'll call this a string variable. You don't have to do this, uh, but I'm going to do it. But we can put it in parentheses and say, I like R. And if we save this, you're going to see I like R right here as our string value. So we can also store strings as well as numbers. Now, all we're going to do for the rest of this lesson is take a look at a few different ways to store data inside of variables. Those are things like vectors and lists and maybe even a data frame. These are common ways that data is stored within R. And so really, that's all we're going to take a look at. If you already know data types within R, this is a perfectly fine time to cut out. In the lessons after this, we're going to go into a lot of other things like operators and expressions, reading in files, sorting the data that we read into data frames. We're going to get a lot more advanced as we go. But again, this is the very basic. So let's take a look at a vector. So, so far, we've only stored something like a string or a number. That's just one value and one value, but we can actually store multiple values. So let's call this a vector variable. And what we can do is we're going to do a C, then we're going to open up our parentheses, and this is going to say that this is a vector. So we can do 10, 20, 50, 100, 1,000. And then when we run this, you'll notice we have this right here. So it's going to say we're storing numbers, and this right here is an index. So we have 1 through 5. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So now we are storing multiple values within one variable. So vectors are good for storing sequences of the same data type. But if we want to store a lot of different stuff, it could be whatever we want. We can store that in a list. Now, lists are very popular. So we're going to do uh, a list underscore variable. And what we're going to do is we're going to name each of these variables that we're putting in here. So I'm going to say that the name is equal to Alex. And then we'll say age is equal to 30. And then we'll say scores is equal to, and we'll pass through a vector here. We'll say 90, 50, and 24, just like this. Let's go ahead and create this list. Now, we can just call this, and we can just say, we could even just say uh, list var here, and it's going to pull in the name, the age, and the scores. Now, you'll notice we have this little shortcut right here, and this is saying that's what it's called. So if I only want to call the name, I only want to retrieve that from this list, I can do that. And if I run it, it's only going to output just Alex, just the name. That's all it's going to do. There are other ways to do this as well. We could, uh, let's get rid of that. We could do a bracket and we could look at the index. So if we did a one, let's go ahead and run this. The first index within R is Alex. So we're still pulling up the same one. We could also do it by the name, but just in a different way. We would need to do a double bracket and pass through name. And we can run this. And it's still Alex. So all these ways work. I will say the one that I typically do, and this is not just for lists. This is similar if we're working with data frames where you have columns and rows. You can pull specific columns by using this shortcut, and I do this all the time. So that is how I would do it. That's my personal preference. Now, there are other data types within R, but the last one I'm going to show you, and this is the one that we're going to be using in future lessons, is a data frame. Now, a data frame could be you just pulling in a CSV file that has columns and rows, which is what we are going to do. But I want to show you kind of what a data frame looks like. So if we come over here, we're going to say data frame, and we're going to pass through, and you're going to actually write data.frame. So if we come right over here, says the function data.frame creates data frames, which is coupled correlations of variables, which share many of the properties of matrices. Now, matrices is another data type, but we're not covering that one right now. But let's click on data frame, and we can pass through different things, like this data right here. Now, when we pass through this data, and let's actually take a look at this, this is what it actually looks like. And this is just some of the uh, information, but it's storing it as data. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do something really similar. Let's say the name. This time we're going to pass through multiple values. So not just a list, it's essentially multiple lists. So we'll do a vector here, and I'm just going to make up some names. So we'll say Alex, Sally, and John. 
and I need to have that in quotes. And then we'll do a comma. We'll pass through our next one. So this will be age, and we'll do another vector. So we'll say is equal to. Uh, we'll do 30, 50, and 99. And then we'll pass through the scores. And in fact, uh, let's just keep the scores like this because it'll be simpler. Now let's go ahead and create our data frame. And our data frame is up here in data as well. You'll see it looks a little bit different. This says there's a list of three, but this, we have this little grid. Now let's actually click on this. It'll pull up this data frame. And now it looks like an Excel spreadsheet. It looks like a CSV file or a database or wherever you store structured data. We have our name, age, and scores. And here is kind of this index that it gives us. And you can see it's all pretty. It looks really nice. And so data frames are extremely popular within R to use, especially with structured data. And this is something that we are going to use when we start pulling in larger data sets. And that's something that as you kind of work with real data in a professional environment, you'll start working with CSVs and larger data sets and you'll have to do all these things with them. And so that's what we're building up to in this series. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you learned a little bit more about how to use R, a little bit more about data types and variables. In the next lesson, we're going to be taking a look at operators and expressions.